Hello everyone, this is Apoorva, an Android team member in GDSC VIT Bhopal. And I am Hers from Android team of GDSC VIT Bhopal. In this video, we will give an insight of Android Studio and its basic functionalities so that even if you are a beginner, you will get everything. Let's start our session with introduction about Android and Android Studio. Android is an operating system. It is just not that. It is a stack base. There is a Linux kernel. Kernel acts as an interface between our hardware and software. We use Linux kernel neither Mac nor Windows, as Android is an open source environment or system. It is primarily designed for touchscreen mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets now supporting many other devices such as Android watches, TV, and car. Now, moving on to Android Studio. Android Studio is an IDE or Integrated Development Environment because it integrates multiple developer tools, making our work much easier. It is like a workshop with a lot of tools that helps us in writing the code and gives us the layout of how our app will look on the screen. It shows us the real-time preview of our design while we create it. Android Studio checks for errors in our code and provides suggestions to improve and code faster. It also builds and runs our app on either an actual Android device or an emulator. Without it, the development process will take much longer time and be full of unnoticed mistakes. Now it's time to download Android Studio. Just top in your favorite browser and search for developer.android.com. And you will see this page. There are some options like download Android Studio, Play Console and Android Courses. So if you are interested in taking Android Courses by Google, then you can check out those links as well. So I'm going with download Android Studio. And in the top, it is suggesting me to download the compatible version for my system that is Windows 64 bit. But if you want to download for some other platform, then you can click on download option and you will get an option for download Android Studio for different platforms and make sure to check the system requirement before installing Android Studio so and now I'm clicking on download Android Studio button and it will show some terms and condition just by agreeing it and click on download button and it will start downloading depending on your internet connection it will take some time now the Android Studio is downloaded and I'm just opening that setup. It will take some time. And it's asking for some permission. Click on yes. And then next, if you're installing Android Studio in a low-end PC, then you can uncheck this Android virtual device for better performance. Hit next, next and install. Click on next, finish. And it will ask you to import Android Studio settings if you have to use Android Studio before then you can import your previous settings or else you can set up as a new one. If you want to send your user statics to Google then you can click on this button and hit next. I'm going with all the standard settings and next. You can choose your preferred theme and click next and then finish. 
it's showing me that Android SDK is up to date. You may have to download some of the components here. So download those components and click on finish. And your Android Studio is ready to work. So, on opening Android Studio, your screen will appear like this. Now, there are various ways of how to work on a project. It can be a new project, or it can be an existing project on your device, or it can be get from VCS like GID. I will show you how to create a new project. For creating a new project, click here. Then you can see a number of templates available for your project. If you are using Jetpack Compose, then go for Empty Compose Activity or you can go for Empty Activity if it's normal. Now we'll click on Next and giving the application a name. Let's say we call it Introduction. As you can see, the package name has automatically changed and the save location, you can change it according to you. You can prefer any of the language like Java or Kotlin. I'll go with Kotlin. Now minimum SDK. Minimum SDK if you're using Jetpack Compose should be minimum API 21. Now you can see that it says your app will run on approximately 98% of devices. I want it to run on 100% of devices. So for that I will choose an older version of API. Let's say API 16. As you can see, it will now work on 100% of devices. For this one, you can keep it unchecked. You don't need to do that. And you can just click on finish. Now, Gradle will work and make all the required files that you need for the application. This might take a while depending on your PC. So we just need to wait. And you can see mine finished in 11 seconds. So I have all the files available over here. This is the XML layout. You may be wondering that what is this Gradle and what is the use of Gradle in Android Studio? Basically, Gradle is an open source build system that is used to automate building, testing and deployment. And in Android Studio, it is used to generate an APK from the Java and XML file in the project by applying appropriate tools. In Android view of project structure, you can find build.gradle file in Gradle script directory. There are two build.gradle in this directory. One is project level and the other is app level. And we add dependencies in the app level. And in the project view, which is the traditional one, you can find this app level build.gradle in the app directory. Now, let's familiarize ourselves with the various sections of the user interface of an Android Studio project. This here is the editor window. This is where you create and modify code. Depending on the current file type, the editor may change. For example, when viewing a layout file, the editor displays the layout editor, as you can see now. Now, the tool window bar runs outside of the IDE window and contains the button that allows you to expand or collapse individual tool windows. The tool windows gives you access to specific tasks like project management, search, version control, and more. You can expand them or collapse them. As you can see, the status bar displays the status of your project and the ID itself, as well as any warnings or messages show up over here. Now, you can see this place in three different ways. If you wanna just access the code, then you can click on code at the right corner. If you want to see your design also while coding, you can click on split. Otherwise, if you just want to see the design, then you can click on design. Now, 
As you can see in design, there is a section called palette. The palette consists of widgets that you can just drag and drop from here and you can see them in the coding section as well. As you can see, the button has appeared. Now, constraint tree shows the alignment of the widgets that we have placed over here. There is also an option called emulator. The emulator here shows the devices that on which we will be running our project. It can be an, a physical device or it can be a virtual emulator. Like if I add a device over here. You can see the device is added over here. So as you all can see, when I click over here, I get the virtual emulator showing my application. So what is exactly a virtual device? The Android emulator stimulates Android devices on your computer so that you can test your applications on a variety of devices and different API levels without needing to have each physical device. Now I will show you how to add a virtual device. Click over here and then you will see an option called device manager. Click on it and then you can click on create device. After clicking on create device, you can pick whichever device you want. Let's say we go with pixel three, click on next. Then pick the API version that you want. Let's go with Oreo and click next. Finish. Your Android device is now created over here. You can click on play and the, it will get connected to the emulator. As you can see, the device is turning on. This might take a bit of time. Now, once it's open, you can click on the arrow uh, run app over here. You can see the application is working over here, just like we made it. Now, if you want to connect a physical device, then just plug it in and turn on USB debugging. If preferring wireless debugging, then just click on the option and go for pair devices using Wi-Fi. Scan the QR code provided on the screen and your device will be connected. and bundles of a project. For that, click on the build option from the top toolbar and there are two types of APKs and bundles, sign and unsign. Actually, the sign one contains a key that is created by you and the unsigned one contains debugging key. And one more thing, APK is the packaging format that install in the device and bundles are the publishing format. Bundle generates optimized APK for each device configuration, so each device downloads only the code and resources that they will use, making the APK site smaller and more optimized downloads. So I am creating the unsigned APK. It will take some time depending on your system specification and size of the project. And here you can see that I got a notification that my APK is generated successfully. You can locate and share this APK to your friends. And I hope this video gives you an insight into the Android Studio and how it can help you build your Android apps.